The Orion Nebula is one of the most spectacular deep sky objects in the night sky. While it may just look like a smudge to the naked eye, the Orion Nebula is the nearest large star forming region to Earth at 1500 light years away. When you take a picture of it using a long exposure, you can see more color and detail than you could ever imagine. In this video, I'm going to capture the Orion Nebula using this camera and lens in the backyard. I'll show you exactly how I do it so you can do it yourself. To take on a project like this, you're gonna need a camera with full manual control, capable of taking a long exposure image. This can be an ordinary DSLR camera like a Canon Rebel T7, or a more advanced camera body like this mirrorless Canon EOS RA. These cameras can take exposures of up to 30 seconds long on their own, which is great for low light night sky photography. Tonight, I'll be shooting a little longer than that using a remote shutter release cable or intervalometer like this one. There are plenty of hardware and software tools available to automate an astrophotography session, but this is one of the easiest and most affordable ways to go about it. Now, you might be thinking that a telescope is needed to capture a nebula up close, but this is not true. A camera lens, especially one with a long focal length like this one, has more than enough reach. This is the Canon RF 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens, a zoom lens with a decent magnification and a fast f ratio. The maximum focal length of 200 millimeters will bring the Orion Nebula in for a closer view, while the f 2.8 focal ratio will allow plenty of light to be recorded in a single shot. I probably won't shoot wide open at f 2.8 because stars can look a little wonky when lenses are wide open, but we'll see. If you're thinking ahead and wondering about filters, we'll get to that in a minute. Astrophotography of any kind can be improved by taking multiple exposures and stacking them together. This improves the image by each frame by stacking the signal or light collected and reducing the amount of noise. You can do this yourself in Photoshop or use one of the many free image stacking tools available like Deep Sky Stacker or Cyril. So for a decent image, I'll take at least 30 shots of the Orion Nebula, and even more if I can, if the weather holds up. Ideally, you would shoot your nebula projects during the new moon phase, or at least when the moon is below the horizon. But sometimes you just need to get out there when it's clear. So you have a DSLR or mirrorless camera and a nice lens, now what? Well, unfortunately, a regular stationary tripod will limit the types of astrophotography projects you can take on. At 200 millimeters, even a 10 second exposure will start to show star trails. While it is possible to capture and stack an image of the Orion Nebula on a regular tripod, a star tracker will open up the astrophotography floodgates. These devices move with the apparent rotation of the night sky and freeze deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula in place. This one is extra nice because it includes a mobile app to control it and it automatically can point to objects in the night sky for you. If you don't care about go-to functionality, there are plenty of other models to choose from where you manually point your lens in the sky. Here's a complete breakdown of the kit I'm using. Remember that the exact camera camera and lens used doesn't matter, but certain ones will result in a bigger image and make the process easier. In general, a fast lens is best, something in the f2.8 or lower range. This will make it a lot easier to frame and focus your subject using the live view screen on the back of the camera. Okay, here's the kit. A carbon fiber tripod to hold the star tracker and camera kit itself. The star tracker head with a counterweight to balance the load. A dovetail bar to mount the camera and lens to the tracker. A mirrorless camera with a handy flip out screen. A light pollution filter for the camera. This one's a clip-in model. A cheap remote shutter release cable with a built-in intervalometer. And finally, a 70 to 200 zoom lens that I'll use at its longest focal length. The only other thing I might need to throw on there is a dew heater band to stop the frost from accumulating on the lens. This one has a nice big dew shield on it already, so it might not even be an issue. This is everything you need to take a stunning photo of the Orion Nebula. If you're lucky enough to live somewhere dark, you can just skip that light pollution filter. The one I'm using is very mild. It's considered to be a broadband filter that's also suitable for galaxies. It's one of the few clip-in filters that I own that fits inside the camera body beneath the lens. Okay, one last bit of important advice before we head outside. This is one I see a lot of beginners getting wrong. For the images to be sharp with nice round stars in them, you need to make sure of these two very important steps. 
your star tracker has to be polar aligned and your camera and lens need to be balanced. All polar alignment means is that the polar axis of your star tracker is aligned with the celestial pole of the Earth. Just use a simple free app on your phone to tell you where to place Polaris, the North Star, in the polar scope of the star tracker. They all have one. Just use the adjustment screws on the mount to get it in the right spot and Bob's your uncle. As for balance, this step is even easier. Just adjust the counterweight in the RA axis and or the camera lens position in the declination axis. See how it doesn't fall in either way? These two steps are dead simple once you get used to them, but I still see a lot of people getting it wrong. Let's head outside and I'll show you how to point to the nebula, frame it up and focus on it. A few little things that will make your experience a little easier is one, for this one, even though it is portable and it can use battery power, it's really cold out here and I don't wanna run the risk of them shutting off at some point throughout the night. So I am plugged into household power. So I've run an extension cord up to the rig and I have a power bar Velcroed to the leg of the tripod. So not only do I have power for this system indefinitely, but I also now have uh, USB ports that I can plug in a USB powered dew heater band to throw in there as well. So all these little extra precautions to ensure that you have a smooth night add up. The remote shutter release cable is plugged in now. Another little thing I like to do is use a zip tie to kind of coil it up into a little circle and then just hook it onto something. So you don't have that, you know, shutter cable just dangling, hanging right off the side of it. Uh, that's another little thing I like to do. As you can see, it's not totally dark out yet, but at least I'm ready for when it does get dark. I'm roughly pointed north. I know where the North Star appears from my backyard. So I'm gonna be pretty close when I do that polar alignment. And then the other thing to think of is where your object's gonna be. And I know from my yard, cause I've been out here so many times, Orion's gonna rise up over that tree just to the east there and you know travel across the sky. And uh, I should be able to start shooting it when it gets up about in that area too. The other plus of waiting till it rises a little bit higher for me is that the light dome of the city is to the east. So if I wait a little bit before I start shooting, I'll capture better sub exposures as it rises away from that light dome. Okay, so Orion is not high enough in the sky to start shooting, but I can see the constellation itself and we can start at least getting the camera focused on one of the bright stars in Orion. It looks like Rigel is in a good spot, so we'll uh, hop over to that. So for this mount, I can use the mobile app to use the go-to functionality. So I can actually do a little star alignment and then this mount will point to objects for me. So let's go over to the SynScan Pro app and connect, perfect. Okay, so we'll go to alignment. We'll just do a one star alignment and we can pick Rigel and see how close it gets. You know, in terms of, you know, sounds of mounts, the GTI doesn't sound great. It's not a sound to be proud of. The EQ6 has that high pitch hum that I love. This has that coffee grinder kind of grind to it. But I can tell it's pointed roughly in the right direction, although I would hope it would stop soon. Okay, we'll see how close it is. So the star alignment process is gonna involve us manually centering the star just to kind of tell the mount where it's pointed. So we're gonna manually center Rigel and then say okay. So to do that, I'm gonna turn on the camera. I've got it set to 200 millimeters. No card in the camera right now, that's okay. We need the live view and I can see because of this camera, it's so bright, maybe you can see that. I can actually see a live view of the trees. So I know that Rigel's close to that and we're gonna manually uh, move the mount over to it. So I'm just increasing the slew speed and we're gonna go up a bit. What's the direction we want here? Okay, yep, here we go. And I'm just looking at the camera screen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just cruising past uh, the Orion Nebula and Orion's belt right now. Very cool to see that. So uh, we are very close. Okay, I see Rigel there. And we're just gonna move over until it's centered and then we'll say, okay. Okay, it's getting very close. 
All right, we are centered. I'm gonna say, okay. Oh, it wants one last uh, up command. Now we can do it. Okay, we're, we're aligned now, and it's gonna be a short hop over to the Orion Nebula next. But before we do that, we wanna focus on this star because it's nice and bright. So again, using the live view, I can see that star there and I'm just gonna zoom in one time and adjust the focus manually. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Now I could use a Batnoff mask to get really dialed in or just do the best I can here with the, on this camera, 30 times live view. Super handy feature of the Canon EOS RA. Let's see how well we can do. That looks pretty good to me. So we'll do some fine tuning once we get closer to Orion, but we are getting very close now. Okay, here we go. We're gonna point at Orion. So I will go to Deep Sky Messier 42, the Great Nebula in Orion, go to. Now it's very close. Let's see how close it got. Oh yeah, she's in there. She's in there. For anyone that knows this area of the night sky, you'll know that the Horsehead Nebula lies very close. It's in Orion's belt. And if you look at my framing, I could actually get both of them in a single shot. So I'm moving the mount using my app right now just to get more of Alnatak. Screen timed out there. Alnitak, this, this bright star, the leftmost one in Orion's belt. And I'm just gonna frame it up so I get more of that star, but without cropping too much of that in Orion Nebula region, because that's our main subject. That looks pretty cool. And this is the you know level of precision you can get with a star tracker like this. Um, not only this, these precise controls for framing it up, but of course it's tracking now. So I can keep shooting this area all night long and it will stay right where it is on the screen. I managed to collect 91 exposures on the Orion Nebula using my camera and lens last night. It remained mostly clear until about 1 a.m. and I took full advantage of these rare winter clear nights. The dew heater was a must. The entire rig was covered in frost by the end of the night, except for the lens. I changed course slightly from my original plan to kind of include the Horsehead Nebula and I centered Orion. The Horsehead is still in there, but sometimes it's best to make your primary target front row center. That's where the stars will look best and where you'll have the least amount of gradients to deal with. I went with 60 second exposures at ISO 800 and that seemed to be the sweet spot. Speaking of sweet spots, I found the clear winner in terms of aperture for this lens and it is f4. Case closed. There was a noticeable improvement in star quality at f4, even over f3.2. I would have loved to shoot at f2.8 using this lens to capture twice the amount of light in a single shot, but the stars did not look good. This is nothing new. Lenses always perform better when you knock it down a stop or two. 